Hi guys, welcome back to Ryan's Study Corner. Here the aim is to make learning fun, easy and accessible. So what are we even going to be talking about today? Today we are going to talk about how to write a lap. So let's just get started one time. Now what are the different parts of a lap? Now different teachers like certain things a certain way so this is the general format and then you just tweak it just a little bit depending on how your teacher likes it so first thing topic or title then we have the aim objective then we have our apparatus and materials we do a diagram if we can for what we're doing the procedure results then we have it can go either discussion calculations interpretation of results it depends on what we have to do for the lab we're going to break that down further so don't worry about it and um, sources of errors precautions and conclusions so topic slash title now not everyone puts a topic or title for their lab but it's really the general topic. So if we're doing something with series on parallel circuits, we would put the topic as probably electricity. If we're going to calculate the density of an unknown substance, we put density as a topic. That's it. But it's just that that is sometimes left out. But that's fine because it is not nearly as important as the next step, which is the aim or objective. No. All this tells us is what we're going to do. So it usually starts with to find, to determine, determine <laughs> to investigate, because that is what are we going to do. That really is that statement. So that's telling whoever is reading this lab that this is what you have set out to do. So maybe it may be to determine the density of an irregularly shaped object to investigate the relationship between voltage and current in a circuit so these are just some examples of objectives or aims now what comes after the objective or aims this is where we list out everything that we use so did we use water did we use a battery did we use alligator clips did we use beakers tripod stand, um, bunsen burner, retort stand and clamp, a ruler, a spring, slotted masses, a stopwatch, anything that we used, we're keeping track of it there. So that if someone is going to try to do this, they already know what they need to get. And then we have our diagram. Depending on how if your lab it is, maybe you can leave out the diagram, but I would generally say no. Do your diagram to show a general setup of how your lab should look so whether you do your retort stand you draw your ruler so that someone again if someone wants to try this themselves they know what their setup should look like so now that you have a good visual representation of what the setup should look like then you go into your procedure all your procedure tells you is all of the steps that you took so step one two three four five six and you go down now, when your teacher is giving you your procedure, they will write it in present tense. They will be like, weigh so by so, measure so by so, press the stopwatch, and that's the tense that they would use. But if you have already done the lab, this is not the tense you're going to use. You are going to write in past tense. And you're not going to say, I weighed the mass. What, what, what am I saying? I weighed the mass. I weighed the irregularly shaped object. No because as bad as it may sound we don't actually i don't want to say we don't care but we don't want to know that you did that because it's understood that you did it so we want it to be in the passive voice so we would say the irregularly shaped object was weed or the length of the wire was measured so we don't say i did it or stephanie did it or Stefan did this while I did so I so no. No one has to know who did it. We just has to <laughs> we just have to know that it was done. And that's it. So you list out your 
proceeding in past tense in the passive voice. Once you list out that, then you go into your results. Your results would be all of the information that you just got from this lab. So if it's something that could be tabulated, you put it in a table, you know, you put table one showing values of voltage and current, and you do your table, you put your heading, you know, you put, if it's voltage, you put slash V, because you always put your unit in the table heading as well. That's something that a lot of people forget sometimes. And then you list your values in your table. Pay attention and make sure everything has the same number of decimal places in a column. So you don't want to have 26.0 up here and then have 26.4475 in the value underneath. Everything should feel cohesive. So you put all of your results, whatever they may be. If they can't be tabulated, then you just put mass of object equals whatever grams. So it's really to make sure that everything is there in the results section in a really clear, concise format. That's all. What do you do after the results? Now, in physics, this is where you usually have some calculations. Other science subjects, less calculations, maybe more of listing observations and that sort of thing. But in physics, this is where you have calculations. So maybe you have to plot a graph, calculate gradient, make some inference from the gradient, or use the gradient to calculate something else all of that we some teachers would say put that under results as well some people would put it under calculations some people put it under interpretation of results so this is where you kind of focus on whatever it is that your teacher prefers and what their format is for that so that is the only really ambiguous part but it's not something that okay CXC is going to deduct marks from you if you put calculations rather than interpretation of results. That really is up to you and how they like to do things in your school. After we do our graph and we do our calculations comes the discussion portion. Now, sometimes discussion is kind of left out because sometimes you really don't have anything to discuss per se. But in your discussion, this is what sometimes some teachers may put discussion and then give you calculation questions to answer. So that's why I was saying it's a little bit ambiguous as whether it's interpretation of results, calculations, or discussion. It kind of overlaps a little bit, but don't worry about it. As long as you have the information there, that is what matters. So in your discussion, what you usually do is put some information about what you're calculating. So if you had to calculate the um, acceleration due to gravity, in your discussion, you would say, well, according to theory, the acceleration due to gravity is usually 9.81 meters per second squared. However, due to whatever experimental errors and whatnot during our lab, the value that we got was 10.1. So it's really about explaining like what went on, why this happened. But many times we don't pay a lot of attention to this because sometimes it's a little bit iffy and it really depends on the mark scheme that your teacher has set for this particular lab too. But in most cases, that isn't a big deal. Most cases, the calculations is the big deal. So pay more attention to that. But you know, you really try to give an all-around lab. Now, Sources of errors and precautions. This gives a lot of people some problems. Sources of errors means anything that makes your answer not to be the correct answer, essentially. So simple language, whatever make your value wrong. Those are the sources of errors. Whether it was that breeze was brewing and it made your stuff shift whether it was your apparatus was rusty so it couldn't move freely, whether equipment wasn't calibrated properly, whether it was parallax. We know parallax is a favorite one because when you're struggling to have three sources of errors, at least you have parallax to knock off one. So it's whatever went wrong. Now, with that being said, if that went wrong, you cannot put that in your precautions. Because precautions would be whatever you did to avoid 
an error. Sometimes reduce, generally to avoid and reduce errors. So if you said that in your precautions, you closed all of the windows so that the wind will not affect your experiment, you cannot then come and say in your sources of errors that the wind affected your experiment because it's like, so did you close the windows? Did you not close the windows? What went on? So we can't just put the same thing for both precautions and sources of errors. If you say that countdown method was used to, um, to reduce reaction time error, then you can't just come and say, okay, we had a huge reaction time error. We know there would be a small error, but if you did something to prevent it, then you don't still also include it as a source of error. So remember, precautions is steps that you took so that everything doesn't go wrong and give you insane values. And sources of errors is everything that actually went wrong that may actually throw off your values. So there's a very big difference. Now, after that, you have your conclusion. Some teachers like, it was found that the density of blah, blah, blah was this. Some teachers like, it was found within the limits of experimental error or within the constraints of experimental error. The density of whatever, whatever was found to be X, Y, Z. That one doesn't actually affect marks. So whatever floats your boat or your teacher's boat, whatever makes all of you happy, you run with that. But make sure that you pay attention to the things that are more important. Pay attention to everything. But make sure certain things have to be done with a lab. So you make sure you have your aim, you make sure you have your apparatus and materials, you make sure you have your diagram, make sure your procedure is in past tense and it's in the passive voice. So no one cares if Ryan was the person who um, used the burette. You tabulate whatever results you could tabulate, organize off your results clearly, Pay very close attention when you're doing your calculations, regardless of what is the heading that you use. Discussion, explain whatever happened or what, how that compares to reality and that sort of thing. Make the connection between the theory and what you all did in your lab. Sources of errors and anything that made your value possibly be wrong. And precautions is anything that you did to make your value less wrong. Conclusion is really just the answer to the aim. So if your aim was to calculate the density of this rock, then your conclusion will be the density of this rock was found to be whatever. So I hope you all found this helpful. I know everyone is kind of trying to get as many labs done as possible before the deadline. So if you have any more questions about the labs, let me know. I'm also going to start a series where I'm going to actually be doing a few labs so we can get a feel for it and we'll be going through the write-up too. So look out for that. So that's it for today. I was just making a mental note to make sure I haven't forgotten anything. That's it for today, guys. Remember to be safe and be kind to yourselves. Bye-bye. <laughs>